Headlines from Palestine, I'm Chris Smiley with If Americans Knew. On Tuesday, Israeli forces killed another boy, this time Laith Abu Naim, 16 years old, in a village near Ramallah in the West Bank. This occurred during protests where youth were throwing stones at Israeli occupation forces that had come into their village. These images are of Laith's family, which has been an all too familiar scene in Palestine. At least six people have been killed in the occupied Palestinian territories since the beginning of this year. In East Jerusalem, Palestinians hung up pictures of those killed by Israeli forces. However, later the IDF would come in to take down those pictures as well as demolish residential areas. On Wednesday, the United Nations Human Rights Office released a report on the 206 companies that have ongoing operations inside of Israeli settlements that are considered illegal under international law. These 206 companies, most of which are from the United States and Israel, are helping Israeli settlements to violate the rights of Palestinians in places like the West Bank. The report reads, the violations of human rights associated with the settlements are pervasive and devastating, reaching every facet of Palestinian life. Due to settlement development and infrastructure, Palestinians suffer from restrictions on freedom of religion, movement, and education. Their rights to land and water, access to livelihoods and their right to an adequate standard of living, and their rights to family life and many other fundamental human rights are infringed upon. Israel's envoy to the UN, Danny Dannon, who himself lives in an Israeli settlement, condemned the report and the blacklist as disgraceful and shameful. Between 500,000 and 600,000 Israelis live in Jewish-only settlements across the occupied West Bank in violation of international law. One company that's virtually doing business in settlements is PayPal. PayPal serves nearly 200 million users in 203 countries, including Israeli settlements in occupied Palestine. However, it denies its service to Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza Strip. So what does this mean for Palestinians? Well, in an already stifled economy constricted by the Israeli blockade and sanctions, Palestinian entrepreneurs are finding it very difficult to conduct business. The company's refusal to serve Palestinians living under military occupation and siege leaves them even more isolated and makes it difficult to compete with the rest of the world. Other money transfer platforms such as Western Union or MasterCard's Payoneer are accessible to Palestinians, but high transaction fees discourage their use. Living under conditions like this, including the harsh Israeli blockade, will make Gaza uninhabitable by 2020, according to the United Nations. PayPal has been the focus of many activists who coined the hashtag PayPal for Palestine and have sent in numerous petitions amidst an online campaign. Last week, PayPal shut down the account of a major Palestine solidarity group, the AFPS. The AFPS is one of 20 human rights organizations placed on a blacklist by Israeli authorities earlier this month. This action from PayPal comes in the midst of a concerted campaign by Israel to pressure other Silicon Valley companies, including Facebook, Twitter, and Google, to censor Palestinians and their supporters. In fact, Facebook has admitted that it does delete accounts at the direction of the United States and Israeli governments. Thank you for watching. Please share this video, and we'll catch you next time for more critical news from Palestine.